Hello everyone, welcome once again to my YouTube channel. This time I have prepared a class about phrasal verbs. In this video, I'm gonna teach you what are phrasal verbs, the use of transitive phrasal verbs, the use of intransitive phrasal verbs, some examples and data from the real world. Sit down and pay attention to this interesting class. Let's start. Okay, I'm gonna start with transitive and intransitive verbs. A transitive verb needs an object. The object completes the meaning of the verb. An intransitive verb doesn't need an object. For example, a sentence with a transitive verb. The new employee wears perfume. In this case, wears is the verb and perfume is the object. Can you imagine this sentence if it only ended in the verb? For example, the new employee wears. The new employee wears that. Can you see that the meaning of the verb is not complete? The sentence is not complete. For this reason, object is necessary after transitive verb to complete the meaning of the verb and the sentence. In this case, the new employee wears perfume. Perfume is the object. And one example with intransitive verb is the new employer right. Okay, remember, intransitive verb doesn't need an object. For this reason, this sentence is complete. The meaning of the verb is complete. The new employee arrived. In this case, intransitive verb is arrived. And all we know that the employee is here, the employee arrived. Well, a tricky part in this video is the object after a transitive verb is often a noun or an object pronoun. For example, she wears perfume. Perfume is the object and is after a transitive verb. And one example with object pronoun. For example, my boss doesn't like me. Oh, it is sad. Well, but it is not important in this video. Okay, the example is, my boss doesn't like me. Me is the object pronoun and is after a transitive verb. In this case, like. My boss doesn't like me. An intransitive verb doesn't have an object. However, it is often followed by an expression of time, place or manner. Examples of this are The fly arrived at 5 and 3 p.m. At 5 and 3 p.m. is an expression of time. How many people work at your office? At your office is an expression of place. She resigned unexpectedly. Unexpectedly is an expression of manner. Expressions go after the intransitive verb and they are in an object. Some verbs can be transitive or intransitive. Sometimes the meaning of the verb is the same. For example, with transitive verb, he drives a car. Drives is transitive verb and a car is the object. With intransitive verb, he drives badly. Can you remember that an intransitive verb doesn't have an object? However, it is often followed by an expression of time, place, or manner. Okay, in this case, badly is an expression of manner. The two sentences have the same meaning. The meaning of the verb is the same, right? But sometimes the meaning of the verb is different. For example, with transitive verb, she runs a company in USA. And with intransitive verb, she can run fast. In the two sentences, I use the verb run, but the meaning of the verb is different. In the first sentence, the meaning is that a girl opened a new company in a place. And the meaning of the second sentence is that a girl can run quickly. 
The meaning is totally different. Data from the real world. Most English verbs are transitive. The most common intransitive verbs in speaking and writing are come, die, fall, go, happen, live, remain, rise, stay and work. Examples. He died in 1998. Those places are recent. The most common verbs that can be transitive or intransitive are begin, call, change, live, move, open, run, start, stop, and study. Examples. Could you move your car, please? In these sentences, move is the transitive verb and your car is the object. We all sat very still. No one moved. Moved is intransitive verb in this case. Phrasal verbs are two word verbs. They include a verb and a particle. A particle is a small word like up, down, back, out, on, off, or in. For example, does your money usually run out before the end of the month? Run is the verb. And the particle is salt. And sit down. Sit is the bear. And the particle is down. Remember, phrasal bears are two word bears. They include a bear and a particle. Using intransitive phrasal bears. Intransitive phrasal bears don't need an object to complete their meaning. For example, sit down with a network. Sit down is the intransitive phrasal bears. And with a network is only a complement. It is not a object. One important thing in intransitive phrasal verbs is that the particle comes after the verb. For example, in this sentence, down is the particle and seat is the verb. And down comes after that seat, that in this case is the verb. And remember this. Don't put a word or phrase between the verb and the particle of the intransitive phrasal verb. Once again, don't put a word or phrase between the verb and the particle of an intransitive phrasal verb. For example, they came from vacation back today. That is totally wrong. The correct is, they came back from vacation today. Remember that the verb and the particle goes together with intransitive phrasal verbs. The meaning of some phrasal verbs is easy to understand. For example, I go out every night. The meaning of this phrasal verb, go out, is not stay home. In my case, I go out every night. The reason is that I play soccer with my friends every day. Other examples are, can you stand up for a moment, please. Or she went away for a month and then came back. The meaning of some phrasal verbs is easy to understand. Some intransitive phrasal verbs have more than one meaning. The meaning of some phrasal verbs is not easy to understand. For example, in the first sentence, I was into my room and then ran out. The meaning of this phrasal verb, ran out, means left. In the second sentence, my money ran out. Uh, this means that be completely used. For example, I had money and then I spent it and I don't have any. Another example with some intransitive phrasal verbs that have more than one meaning is in the first sentence, my car broke down last week. This means that he stopped working. In the second sentence, he broke down in tears. He, this means that he starts to cry. Many everyday spoken commands use intransitive phrasal verbs. For example, come on, that means hurry, let's go. Or look out, watch out, that means be careful. For example, Look out with the bears. And go ahead. That means do it. Go on. This means continue. Or sit down. That obviously is sit. 
data from the real world. In general, phrasal verbs are less common in academic writing, but writers often use these verbs. Grow up, go on, go back, turn out, break down, come up, wear out. For example, one question came up in the discussion. Using transitive phrasal verbs. Some phrasal verbs are transitive. They need an object to complete their meaning. Do you remember that transitive verb need an object to complete their meaning? It is the same. For example, he paid back the money he owed. The money he owed is the object. Pay back is the phrasal verb. If the sentence has no object, we have the question, what did he pay? He paid back. What did he pay? For this reason, object is so important at the moment when we use transitive phrasal verb in sentences. It is important for the sentences to have meaning. Most transitive phrasal verbs are separable. This means that non-object can come before or after the particle. For example, write down your expenses. The verb is write, the particle is down, and the object is after the particle in this case. In the second sentence, write your expenses down. Write is the verb, the object is your expenses, and the particle is down. In this case, the object is before the particle. When we use subject pronouns in sentences with transitive phrasal verbs, the object pronouns come before the particle. For example, write them down. Them is the object pronoun. Down is the particle. In this case, a object pronoun is before the particle. This is a perfect sentence. Don't put an object pronoun after the particle. For example, write down them. It is grown. Okay, remember that. Indefinite pronoun object. Example, something, nothing, someone, no one, everyone. It can come before or after the particle. For example, she throws away everything. Or she throws everything away. In the first sentence, the indefinite pronoun comes after the particle, and in the second sentence, the indefinite pronoun comes before the particle. Longer objects usually go after the particle. For example, is he setting up a new financial management company? Or is he setting a new financial management company up? It's better put the longer objects after the particle than before the particle. Because in this way, the sentence has better sense and many people think that the sentence sounds better. Some transitive phrasal verbs have more than one meaning. In this case, I'm going to use the transitive phrasal verb bring up in the two sentences. In the first, they are bringing up three children. The meaning of this transitive phrasal verb is raising a child. And in the second sentence, I'd like to bring up the subject of money. Uh, the meaning of bring up of this transitive phrasal verb is introduce a topic. I'd like to bring up the subject of money. As I explained, there are transitive phrasal verbs that have more than one meaning. In occasions, one, two, and even three meanings. For example, uh, set up. That means arrange, plan, and build. Can you imagine that the same phrasal verb can be transitive or intransitive? Yes? No? Okay, some phrasal verbs have one meaning when they are transitive and have a different meaning when they are intransitive. That is true. Now, let's see an example. 
I worked out a budget. In this case, the phrasal verb is transitive phrasal verb. That means solve or calculated something. In the second sentence, I work out a gym every day. In this case, work out this phrasal verb means exercise. Exercise in the gym. Data from the real world. Research shows that the following transitive phrasal verbs are common in academic writing. Break off, cut off, point out, sum up, carry out, find out, set up. Well, my friends, to finish this video, I want to leave a list with phrasal verbs. Some transitive phrasal verbs, some in transitive phrasal verbs. If you learn all these phrasal verbs, you could speak better English and improve speech and vocabulary. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye bye.